It's the last of the professional MasterChef heats. And these six chefs believe they have what it takes to earn the last few quarterfinal places. Now, they face two challenges set by judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. Being up against all these other top chefs in the country is quite daunting. It, it's all unknown. I believe in my food, uh, so let's hope the judges do as well. I'm excited to meet our chefs and see what talent we're going to uncover. I hope they can enjoy it, relax, and serve some fantastic food. This is the skills test. We're going to see your skill test in a moment. Marcus, we start with you. Lovely looking fish. Mm. What do you want them to do with it? I would like them to fill it a whole place, steam one portion, and serve it with a mushroom cream sauce. Why steam it? I mean, Monica, you, I don't know if you would agree, but I've never had a cream sauce with a pan fried piece of fish before. Very rarely. It's a wonderful way to cook a fish, you know, and it's going to keep it very moist. Oh, if this goes well, this is going to be a cracking lunch for me. Mm. Can you show me how to do it? Sure. In this uh, steaming pot, we have our already made fish stock, because this is going to be used for the base of our sauce. But I want to add into it, though. So I'm just going to half a lemon, a couple of bay leaves, a sprig of thyme, shallot, lemongrass, fennel. Obviously, the chefs are going to come in, they're going to see the steaming basket. I wonder, though, if they are going to use those ingredients to enhance the stock. Well, that's the test. I mean, the, the ingredients are there. Mm. It's up to them. So, now I'm going to start to fill it the plate. The most important thing is here, we're looking for knife skills, making sure that they cut around the head, uh, and that, you know, that, that they're filleting the fish properly. I think you two are going to get really upset if they start to hack about with this fish. That's not going to happen. What, then they're not going to hack about with it, or you're not going to get upset? <laughs> Both. Who comes to the fillets, take your knife, gently angling the knife along the skin. There's no pressure on my knife at all. Just the knife's doing all the work. Seems relatively simple mm. for a trained chef. So, let's put them into our steamer. These will steam for probably about three minutes. So, now that they're steaming away, I'm going to start to make sauce. Just a little chopped shallot. Just a few mushrooms. We're just going to put a little bit of white wine. Stock. <clears throat> Again, so that's got added flavour now. With oh, all the, that's all incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm going to watch very closely how they make this sauce because they could approach this in loads of different ways. You've got to use common sense, really. I mean, you don't want to see them fill that pan up with lots of stocks. It's going to take 15 minutes to reduce down. So take this liquid and pass it up. A drop of cream. You've reduced that right down. Yeah. So the mushroom's in. While that's just slightly cooking down, I'm going to bring over my steamed place. How do you know it's cooked? Well, that's just down to the chef's experience. And you just have to touch it. And there we have our steamed place, the white wine mushroom sauce. Would you like to taste? You try stopping me. <laughs> <laughs> The fish is so delicate, but it's not been overpowered by the cream sauce, and the cream sauce has got so much flavour in it. I'm hoping for their sake and my sake that they can accomplish this. Should we, should we get them in and have a look? Definitely. Let's get them in. First up is sous chef Scott. I'm currently working in a free rosette fine dining restaurant in a hotel in Hertfordshire. I've been working here seven and a half years now. I've worked my way up slowly over the years. It's the best job I've ever had. And the food's really good. I've become a chef because of my mum. She thinks she's a better cook than she is. So I wanted to, uh, to cook for her. <laughs> I'm going to give it my best shot, and hopefully the judges will like my food. 
Hello, Scott. Hello. Welcome to Master Chef. Thank you very much. Right, look, this is the skills test. Yeah. What I'd like you to do for us is fill it the whole place and steam in one portion. Yeah. And serve that with the mushroom white wine cream sauce. Right. We've done that before? Yes, yeah, been a while, but yeah. You've got 20 minutes. Okay. Off you go. You've got those fillets off in just over 60 seconds, Chef. Thank you. Feeling less nervous now? Uh, I'm still shaking a bit and my heart's going, so, yeah, I am nervous. Would you let us in on your plan, please, Scott? So, yeah, I'm going to make a sauce with the mushrooms, shallots, a little bit of white wine. How long are you going to cook that fish for? I'm going to give it about four or five minutes. What are you doing there? You're just reducing down? Yeah, some... I'm reducing down the fish stock just to intensify the flavour a bit. OK. What's going to happen next? I'm going to add the cream. Scott, you've got three minutes left, please. Perfect. All done, with a couple of minutes to spare. Yeah. You do know that Greg eats quite a lot, and that's a small portion. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? That's a mouthful for him. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> you approach a fish with a huge amount of competence, which was really good to see. Very well filleted with speed, uh, and then skinned and trimmed with your sauce. I'm looking for layers of flavour. So for your steaming, use the fish stock and use that as your sauce, because I personally wouldn't waste all those ingredients in water. Yep. Guys, you try and I'll, I'll just I'll just smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, not a bad effort. Fish, surprisingly, has not overcooked because it was there for a hell of a long time and it was a great attempt from you. I look forward to seeing a bit more from you, Scott. Thank you. It's a very nice, light, flavoured fish dish. But I just, as a chef, I'm looking for more layers and I'd like you to incorporate more flavours within your food. I really like it, love the textures. However, the sauce has nowhere near the depth of flavour that Marcus's dish had, I have to say. <laughs> but that's a pretty good start, chef. Thank you. We cook tasting menus, so they're having ten courses, and I guess that was just my thought that I want. I just want to give them a nice square piece of fish with a bit of sauce on top. <laughs> I'm gonna get hammered for that, ain't I? <laughs> Next is senior sous chef Jamie. My career started in London, and I moved up when I was 18 and worked in a Michelin-style kitchen for two years. Then I moved back down to Devon and gained the knowledge I know now today. <laughs> Being a professional chef means everything to me. I work on my days off, I work hours under the sun, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I've just moved into a new property with my girlfriend, and I have to have my own room due to the amount of cookbooks and cooking stuff I actually have. And I feel Master Chef is the best competition out there for chefs, so I feel it's time to take on this challenge and see if I can do well in this one. You right, Jamie? Good, thanks. <laughs> this is a skills test. Done any fish work before? Yep. Sauce making? Yep. <laughs> well, you should be all right then. <laughs> 20 minutes, off you go.
nice working chef, isn't it? <laughs> How many fish do you fill it in the course of a day? Average day we do ten types of fish to prep and break down. You've stumbled on the right skills test, my friend, haven't you? Hopefully. Ten minutes left. Steam the fish, make the sauce. Cooked? Yep. Come on in. You done? For a chef who deals with a lot of fish on a day-to-day -day basis, your filleting surprises me. There's just too much waste on the bone and too much waste in the bowl from the fish itself. This is the attention to detail we're looking for, OK? The sauce for me is, is a very strong reduction. But the mushrooms that you used on the base just wasn't enough of it to, to impart any mushroom flavour. To mushroom sauce, you want to taste mushroom. The fish is lovely, but th this sauce is far too liquid. Yep. The good thing about it is the fish is nicely cooked. Um, but for me, that's all. Yep. I know he made mistakes here, but I, I actually think he's, he's, he's competent. Pressure was immense in there. Uh, I messed up, did some little rookie mistakes, leaving too much fish on there. I'd rather just do it all again. Just cut it and start again. The final chef to face Marcus's test is Ian from Scotland. I'm currently working in a family run restaurant in Lynlithgow. It's my first head chef job, yeah, and it, it's, it's very different from anything that I've done before. It's uh, a lot more challenging, got a lot more responsibility. I used to get up to a little bit of mischief when I was, uh, when I was at school. So uh, I left school, became a chef, and I learned respect. I think for most chefs, I think the skills test kind of kind of puts the fear into them. My dream scenario would probably be fish prep. I'm fairly confident that I'd be able to, to overcome something like that. Welcome to MasterChef. Thank you. Uh, how does that look? Good. Good? <laughs> <laughs> Ian, okay, you've chef. got 20 minutes. Off you go. Tell, tell us your plan. Well, I'm going to put some aromats into the water while I'm steaming it, and then I'm going to cook a portion of the fish, and then I'm going to go into making the mushroom sauce straight after. Right on. Ian, you've got just four minutes left. Which are... That's enough, isn't it? It should be, yeah. Done.
Filleting a fish from tail to head is completely the wrong way. OK, chef. A fish is, is filleted from head to tail. A few other points. The, the garnishes on the left-hand side were there for the steaming, including the fish stock, of which I would like you to have used that yeah, fish stock in the steamer yeah, for chef. your sauce. And then the stock and white wine wasn't reduced far enough. The fish is overcooked. There's no depth in the sauce. It is just wet and it's really quite boring, really. Yeah, chef. Yeah, Ian, I think we've covered it. The, the processes and the way this was gone about is clearly reflected well. in the dish. It's not great. Let's hope you do better in the next round. Oh, well, promise. I think he, he, he knows his mistakes. Oh. I, think, I think he'll come back. I do. Uh, not so good. What I'm dreading is looking back on the TV and having Monica look at me like that. Oh. Monica, your turn. What are you going to get the chefs to do? I would like the chefs to make a crepe Suzette. Yes! A crepe Suzette is a crepe or pancake that's served with an orange caramel sauce. It's normally served flambéed at the end. Sounds simple, but as we know, nothing's simple in this kitchen. <laughs> How long have they got to do this? 15 minutes. Right. Crepe Suzette, one of my favourites. Off you go, Monica. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make my crepe batter up, have some plain flour, and they have to make this uh, recipe up on their own just by judging the amount of flour to liquid. Everyone makes pancakes at home. We don't necessarily need a recipe with it. Some sugar. It's funny, one of these recipes is the sort of thing your mum used to do. She used to throw it together. Mums yeah, do, don't, mums they? Do, don't they? Just throw them yeah. together. I guess I've picked it up from my mum then. <laughs> what consistency do you want? Well, you want it quite runny, the mix, because mm. you're not wanting very thick pancakes here. Right, so now my mix is made. I'm going to cook my crepes up. It'd be really interesting to see the chefs that actually have come in here on their first dish and flip the pancake. Are you going to flip, Monica? No, it's too much pressure from you two to, to, to flick. I flick with my daughter, though. <laughs> so now I'm just making sure it's lovely, light, golden colour on the pancakes. And now I'm going to make the sauce. I've got some sugar. I'm going to turn this up to a high heat. And I want to caramelise this sugar. So to this, I'm going to add knob of butter. OK, so let that emulsify. Be very careful, in goes the orange juice. So you can see the sauce consistency is coming really lovely there, Greg. The juice has reduced down. So at this point, I'm going to add my liqueur. Okay. Just flambe, burn off the alcohol. And now I'm adding the crepes back into the sauce, and I want it completely coated through in that sauce. Mm. This is the classic way that it's served. And then just finishing it off with the fresh oranges that have just been dropped back into the sauce. There you have it. Crap Suzette. <laughs> One. Okay. One each, Greg. Okay. One each. That was hell, waiting for these to be cooked. <laughs> that is so satisfying. With the balance of the sugar and the alcohol and the, the orange juice makes the whole dish come together. I think it's really, it's really good, a great challenge. I now know what a perfect one should taste like. Should we get the chefs in, see what they make of it? First up is cookery teacher, Helen. I currently work at a vegetarian cookery school in the centre of Bath. I turned vegetarian at 10, but I always wanted to be a chef, although I think I always considered myself an artist first. So it's a great career because I can use that artistry. I'm quite nervous about Marcus and Monica tasting my food. With Greg, I, th I think it's going to be OK. 
I'm completely obsessed by sweet things, so I think we'll, we'll match those. Welcome Thank to you. Professional MasterChef. Thank you. This look good to you? Yeah, so far. <laughs> you have 15 minutes to make us crepe Suzette. Okay. Off you go. So you just having a quick test there, were you, with the first one? Yeah, make sure the thickness is right. Done this before. More challenging while shaking there. Are you shaking? A little bit. <laughs> I look up every now and then and remember where I am. <laughs> <laughs> look up again. <laughs> 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 Not quite right with these pancakes, on. Huh? Oh, too thick and just cooked too slowly. You've got five minutes left. What's going on, Helen? Oh, I'm just not liking the way it's. What? It... All right, if you're going to keep this going, we're not going to have much pancakes. No. Though. You've got to make a sauce as well, and you're running out of time. Yeah. Helen, you, you've got just two minutes left now. No, it's not going to work, sorry. <gasps> you, you've only got a minute left. Yeah. 20 seconds left. Get it on, get it on, get it on. Right. <laughs> OK. God. <laughs> Sorry about that. Wow. Bit of a pancake crash, really. Yeah. Look, Helen, I think after the second attempt where it went wrong, you then lost your cool. Yeah. Then burnt it, then burnt the, the pan next to you, started smoking. Yeah. Making the, the, the sauce, you had everything ready to go, but then you threw it out in the last minute and yet still managed to flambe some kind of sauce in the end, Helen. <laughs> oh, Helen, um, because it was rushed, the oranges have still quite under, you know. Mm. Um, it was almost there. Mm. It was so rushed, though. It's, it's, it's a real shame. Mm. Helen, I think this is a rubbery pancake. Uh, an orange sauce and some orange segments. And that's all it is. I don't think it's a write-off. I think you know how to do it. I think if we let you have another go, you'd be absolutely fine. I really do. Oh, I'm really disappointed in myself, really gutted. Out of all the skills test it could have been. I was really hoping for a sweet one and, um, I, yeah, just completely screwed it up. Didn't show what I could do at all. Next up is 23-year-old Carl. I'm a head chef a gastro pub in Henlow. Head chef for about 18 months. Guys, check on small muscle pigeon, follow sea trout and venison. Yes, chef. I mean, a lot of people do see me as, as quite young. I do look quite young as well. But I think if you work hard enough, the age doesn't really come into it. There's loads of things I love about being a chef. I just don't think you get the buzz from any other job. For me, I could never sit behind a desk because I, I fidget too much. <laughs> Service, please. I'm so looking forward to start the last chef, and I'm hoping that the excitement will overcome the fears, sort of thing. <laughs> Carl, what I would like you to make today is a crepe Suzette. Yeah. 
Do you know what that is? Yeah, uh, it's um, orange and pancakes. You, you've got the gist of it. 15 minutes. OK. Good luck. What are you up to, Carl, with the orange juice? Um, I'm bringing it up to the boil. Yep. I'm going to get some sugar in there, and then I'm going to whisk the, um, the butter into it. You're halfway, all right? You've got seven and a half minutes left. Yeah. What's happened? Uh, I've, I've burnt the pancake. Right. How was that, Carl? Um, it was yeah, a bit, bit nerve-wracking. Um, I'd obviously burnt two, two crepes, so I had to redo them. Yeah, could have gone a lot better, I think. Actually, quite curious how it's going to taste. Ah, oh, there's so much egg in this mix. There was no sugar as well, chef. Yeah. yeah. Then the, the, the pan-frying of the orange segments in oil. Um, hmm. Right. Come on, let's... That's not a pancake, that's more like an omelette. Mm. You were meant to make a caramel. Uh, you did not do that. It's as wishy-washy, runny orange juice on the plate. Well, if it was served to me, I'd, I'd send it back and I wouldn't come back again. Best you can do is draw a line under this, forget about it, make sure you come out and really fire into your own dish. Yeah. Lift that chin up, OK, and lift those shoulders. You're a chef, head chef. Yep. Thank you. Like Sunday, we did like 500 covers, and that felt easy compared to that. <laughs> oh, it was a nightmare. The final chef to face Monica's test is Mark, who has spent six years working in Michelin starred kitchens. I'm currently the joint head chef with my partner at a restaurant in Worcestershire. The things I love about being a chef is being creative. It's an art. The plate, your canvas. All good chefs have to have passion, drive, enthusiasm. Service. Because the hours are crazy. You lose your friends. It's such a hard industry to come into, but if you've got the drive, the passion and enthusiasm, I think you'll fly. Welcome to Master Chef Mark. You have to make us some crepes and serve it to the Suzette sauce. Lovely. Off you go, 15 okay. minutes. Good luck, mate. Tell me, what level of kitchen were you working in before? I've worked at a, a few one stars and then I was also working at a two mission star. OK. What are you doing now, Mark? I'm just uh, pouring my uh, orange juice into my caramel just to flavour the caramel. You're halfway. You've got seven and a half minutes left. Yep. Thank you.
How many pancakes are you making? I'm making one for each of you. Ah. Happy, Greg? <laughs> jump, jump two. Done. Yeah. Mark, uh, the sauce you try to flambe it from cold it yep. doesn't work. Okay. It needs that heat behind it. Yep. Okay. But I love the fact you added the, the zest into it okay. as well. Thank you. I thought that was a good attempt, Mark. Thank you. It would be nice maybe to see the, the pancakes go back into the sauce to absorb it. OK. Uh, but I think overall it's a, it's a very, very good attempt. Thank you. The caramel, the orange, has come together very well. It's a very good sauce. I love the flavour. I find the sauce a little, little too thick. OK, thank you. Uh, but, hey, for a skills test, first challenge on MasterChef, I think you can be quietly pleased with yourself. Thank you. Nervous when he came in, but very competent. Yeah. I am pleased that, that this first challenge is out of the way, and it is a good start to the competition. So just see what happens in the next round. We put these skills tests together to, to get an idea of what level our chefs are cooking at. Sometimes you think that the, the difficult tests are going to trip them over and some of them come running through and shine through it and then the simple tasks just seem to trip some people over but there's still another round to go. There's a number of chefs here that really, really interest me that I really want to see what their signature dish is made of. This round is where it really counts. This is your food, the dish you've been planning. It's all to play for. After this, we will lose three of you. It's that plain and simple. You've got one hour and 15 minutes to serve up your best dish for a place in the next round. Off you go. I don't think the judges have a very high opinion of me at the moment. It's really embarrassing. I burnt pancakes. That's ridiculous. So I know I've really got to make sure I impress them, otherwise, you know, I'll be going home. Um... What are you cooking for us? I've got some venison loin, coated it in cocoa powder with a, a salt baked parsnip some morel mushrooms and a, a red currant shoe. I've run it on the specials board over, over a few weekends hey. to get feedback. That's a good place yeah. to trial it as well. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I, I, like, I like that. It's also quite a dangerous place to trial it as well. Cole, need a big round? Yeah, yeah. No matter, chin up. Okay. Chocolate, venison, chocolate in game works. But coating a loin of venison in cocoa powder is not something I personally have come across before. One of the things that concerns me with cocoa powder is that it's already bitter. And if you burn it in that pan, it could become even more bitter. He's tried this dish on his customers. They like it. I just hope you and I like it too. Scott? Yep? I think I might be falling in love with you. Well, you said I was a bit tight on the last one, so hopefully I'll... Uh... That's true. Enjoy it. What oh. are you going to do with that? So I'm going to pan roast rib of beef. I'm going to serve with onions, mushrooms, English ricotta and truffle. Where's the ricotta go? 
The ricotta is just going to be dotted over the dish, which gives it a little bit of creaminess. Where'd you learn that? Um, it's just like what I've tried out, and it, I just feel it works. Good luck, son. Thank you. With a piece of beef like this, the ribeye, you and I want a big beef sauce to go with it. It's just what it's crying out for. He's trimmed down beef cheek, sweated it off in their high heat, and he's going to make a sauce in the pressure cooker. The other key thing for Scott is the timing. That's a seriously big piece of meat, and he needs to get that on pretty soon. The main thing for this dish is that I cook the beef to the best I can. I've practised this a few times now. I'm surprised I don't look like a piece of beef, but, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Helen. Hello. What are you cooking for us today? I'm cooking a Japanese-flavoured dish. The main part is tofu, so I'm seasoning it up, making a marinade that will also be served on the side as a dip and serving some aubergine. There's an egg roll in there as well. OK. And I turned vegetarian and my parents didn't know what to do with me. So then, you know, to show what can be done with vegetarian food means mm. so much. And I would just love to get that out there. Looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> Tofu is a very, very bland ingredient to use, but if you can get me excited about tofu, happy days. I'll be delighted. This dish really pushes me. It goes right up to the wire with the timings. There's lots of elements to bring together. So if one element goes wrong, then I'm really out of time. So I've really challenged myself for this. 20 minutes have gone already. To have the chefs like Marcus Waring and Monica go like to taste my food is it's an honour, but um, it's also very scary as well especially after that first round I had. I really didn't show what I can do. Nerves get the better of me and I just need to prove to them that that's not going to happen again. Ian, tell me about your dish here today. It's roast breast of guinea fowl with a fondant potato, some carrots and navy and toast puree. The outcome I want is for all three of you to enjoy my dish, just to enjoy the, the flavours that I've put together and, and hopefully it'll look nice and it'll taste nice, but I'm confident that it will. You feeling brave? Definitely. You didn't get dressed up for nothing then? No, go big or go home. Ian is making us guinea fowl with toast puree. But what I think this is going to be is more of a bread sauce. Ian's also making fondant potatoes. I know how much you love your fondant potatoes, but I do too. So I hope he's cooked those potatoes for long enough and absorb all that fantastic butter. I've practised my dish. I've stayed late every night, pretty much this week after work, to get it practised and get it nailed down. I hope the flavours and the technique I use just blows them away. Jamie, what are you making for us? I am doing blade of beef with nasturtium puree, smoked champ and onions. It's a dish that brings back bits of home and stuff like that, because I'm a Devon boy, so using the flowers from the countryside and stuff is just a nice taste of what I like to cook. Good luck, Jamie. Cool, thank you. Beef blade is a piece of meat that many, many years ago was always a stewing piece of meat. It was something that was almost a second-class joint. It can be tough. You've got to be very careful. You want to make sure you break those fibres down and you want to keep it lovely and medium rare. Jamie is smoking the champ, the mashed potato with the spring onion. He's got to get that smoking right, because if it's too strong and accurate, it can overpower the whole dish. Guys, 20 minutes left, that's all. I think every chef's competitive, every chef tries to be the best. When you run competitions, you also learn from other people and see different techniques. I am competitive. So I'm really looking forward to cooking my own food, just to kind of showcase what I can do. Mark, what are you up to? So I'm cooking a squab pigeon, and we've also got some artichoke puree, a few uh, pak choy leaves, and some pickled cherries. Oh. Oh. I'm guessing this dish is completely your own invention. Yeah, it's lots of elements that I've taken throughout from where I've worked mm. and kind of 
brought them all to kind of create my sort of style. If your fiance is a chef, yep. why didn't she enter? My fiance's done great British menu. Did, did Marcus beat her in any of the rounds? <laughs> I, do, uh, I don't think Marcus. <laughs> so you're a, you're, you're a competition pair, really, aren't you? Yeah, um, we've done a few, and it's just nice to kind of kind of change your environment, get out the kitchen, and kind of do something a little bit different. Mark's dish sounds confident. He's cooking a squat pigeon. He's going to be serving the, the legs that he's confit and then roll them in breadcrumbs and pistachios and then deep frying them. The breasts have been sous vide in a water bath and then they're going to be roasted in the pan. The most important thing about this technique is getting your timing absolutely right. Chefs, you have just 10 minutes left. Monica, we've got vegetarian, we've got guinea fowl, we've got rib of beef, we've got venison, we've got pigeon. Wow, what a selection. I'm looking forward to seeing what all these chefs are going to give us because I think they're all very individual. That's why I love Signature Round, because we get to see something very, very different. You've got just four minutes left to produce a masterpiece. Time's up. Stop. Are you okay? Yeah, your plate looks beautiful. Oh, it, it really look looks. Good. It really does look beautiful. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Brave. Scott, bring your dish up here for us, please, Chef. First up is Scott, who has made roast ribeye of dry aged beef, served with burnt onion, mushrooms, ricotta cheese, truffle, and a port and red wine sauce. Scott, I don't know why you're looking so miserable, because that looks like a really good looking plate of food. It's got eat me written all over it. Thank you. I love rubber beef, and I think, you know, if you had ruined this and overcooked it, I'd be really upset. So I appreciate the fact that you have cooked it properly. I absolutely love the sauce, you know. It's rich, it's heavy. I want that with my rubber beef. The ricotta doesn't really have any place on this plate whatsoever. I don't understand why it's there. Uh, and the truffle as well. They don't add anything to the, to, to the dish itself. I find the shallots undercooked. I don't understand what the ricotta's doing on there. You look disappointed. Mm. You wanted a knockout dish. I did, yeah. I'm disappointed if you that it isn't as wow as it possibly could be. Thank you, Chef. I'm feeling a little bit deflated, actually. I was hoping I was going to like the dish a little bit more. I think next time it's just got to be right if there is a next time. Helen, would you bring your dish up, please? Helen has served a sesame-crusted tofu and aubergine stack with an egg roll, ginger and lime pickled cucumber and carrot, shiitake mushrooms, a broccoli broad bean and pea garnish, and a sesame dipping sauce. I find it not quite right mm. in its presentation because you try to take Japanese food and turn it into fine dining mm. food and that doesn't sort of work for me mm. from the dressing point of view. Okay. Before I tasted this dish, I didn't really like tofu at all. But I actually really enjoyed that little stack there. I thought it was very nice. There's a freshness about the plate with the, the broccoli and the peas, but the big wow factor that I was hoping for wasn't there, but I do understand and I do get the dish. Mm. It's all a bit mixed up for me. It's not harmonious. It's, it's a plate where I'm, I'm sampling little bits at a time and I'm not enjoying it as, as an actual dish. 
I like your dish up to a point. It's light, it's fresh, my God, it's healthy. And you have <laughs> captured flavours of sourness and heat and saltiness. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, to be frank, I just find it unremarkable. That's the issue. It was mixed. It was a mixed bag. But on the good side, Marcus enjoyed the tofu. So, yes. <laughs> Jamie, would you come up here, please? Jamie's blade of beef is served on smoked champ with a nasturtium puree, pickled onions, shallot rings, burnt onion powder, and an onion and beef jus. Great colour coordination, Jamie, and a, a nice-looking, balanced plate of food as well. Thank you. Um... Simply outstanding. Cool. I don't think there's much I would add to that plate of food at all. Very brave using that cut of beef, but then I know you know how good that beef is, yeah. and that's a chef that understands the product. The nasturtium leaf, the pepperiness underneath, with that champ that is just very, very delicately smoked. Marriage made in heaven. Great job. The sauce, rich, velvety. Shall I go on? It's a great dish, Jamie. It's, it's brilliant. Um, I'm you. so, so, so pleased for you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful blend of unusual flavours. I mean, I, I really, really like it. This is some great cooking from you, Jamie. Mm. This is what I wanted to see from you. Thank you. This means a lot to you, Jamie. I've done every night with sweet pats in that dish after work, so... And do you know what, Jamie? That shows. Yeah. That shows on the plate. Thank well you. done. Cheers. Great Thank job. You. Well done, Jamie. Whoa. What a super, super dish. I'm feeling great. I'm happy. I've got good feedback. No criticism. Couldn't have gone any better. Ian, up you come, please. Ian has made roast guinea fowl, served with a confit leg wrapped in potato, a fondant potato, baby carrots, a navi, toast puree, and a red wine sauce. This dish seriously, seriously lacks the wow factor. Um, the guinea fowl breast is overcooked. The leg itself seems dry as well, and the fondant is appalling. There's no colour, there's no butteriness to it. It is quite bland, it lacks seasoning. Nothing has been done to it to really bring the best out of these beautiful ingredients. It is disappointing. It does lack flavour, Ian. There's no, there's no two ways about it. I'm not feeling particularly good, to be honest. Um, I don't feel I did myself justice at all. I think I underestimated how hard it is, to be honest. Carl, come and join us, please. Carl has served venison loin crusted with cocoa powder, a salt-baked parsnip, beetroot, morels, and a red currant jus. The presentation is, is simple. Uh, but, but nicely put on the plate. I like it. However, I'm frightened of getting too close in case I poke my eye out with a parsnip. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Carl, for me, the, the venison in the middle is, is, is lovely and, and how I would like it. Um, however, if you didn't tell me there was cocoa powder, I wouldn't know. I don't understand why you would need it if it doesn't bring anything extra to, to the dish. 
The vegetables are nicely cooked. There's a, a nice crunch and sweetness to the parsnip. The same for the, for the beetroot and the morels. What's not working is the sauce is not bringing the dish together. Um, it's just a fruit sauce. It's almost a, a fruit coulis on the plate. However, I think you've proved that you can cook venison. The vegetables are really nice. I think you've proved that you've got a better touch than you showed us in the last round. OK. Yeah, obviously, there was some nice comments, but um, I felt like I could have done a lot better. Mark, would you come and join us, please? Mark has made breast and leg of pigeon with a pistachio crust served with an artichoke puree and artichoke crisps, pickled cherries, pak choy, a port and red wine sauce, and a pistachio and nasturtium garnish. Mark, I think this plate of food looks stunning. Really, really lovely looking plate of food. Thank you. Very, very good indeed. Beautifully cooked pigeon. In fact, perfectly cooked pigeon. There's a freshness with the pak choy on the plate there as well. And the cherries are not too acidic. They're delicious. The sauce is deep and rich. Uh, the puree is beautiful and smooth and velvety. I'm really, really struggling to find some fault with this dish. <laughs> I really am. Good job. That's the uh, nerves. What I love about this dish is the fact that it doesn't look like there's a lot on it, but there's so many different elements and textures and flavours coming through it. It's so accomplished. If I have to find something to complain about, please don't let me share it with these two in people. <laughs> Thank you. You're getting solid praise from the, the chefs at either side of me. I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at you. I, I think this is a chef that's really learned his craft. It's a stonking good dish. Mark, you've got to be chuffed, right? Yeah, I'm very happy, very, very happy. He's playing it very cool and calm. I'll give him that much. I was a bag of nerves before I came in, but thank That's you very much. That's cracking. Well done, Mark. Well done. I'm feeling over the moon. It's good that everything just kind of went all together and shone for me today. Two things are obvious to me. One is we've got six chefs here who really care and are passionate. And the other thing that's obvious is this isn't going to be an easy judging. Three of you are leaving the competition. We'll call you back in once we've made a decision. I was really impressed with some of these dishes. Mm. I'm, well, we all were. I mean, real serious quality. You know, look at us grinning like three Cheshire cats. <laughs> there was two chefs in here today that absolutely stood out, head and shoulders. We can't hide that fact. Jamie and Mark, they absolutely led the way. Took off from the pack, actually. Jamie and his beef dish with the smoked champ Mark with his pigeon dish. There's just nothing else to say. Mm. I think you both agree, these two chefs, straight through. Uh, uh, absolutely easy. You can't even split them apart, they're that good. I don't want to sound cruel, but it was as if Ian had somehow presented a dish that he'd managed to suck all the flavour out of. It yeah. was really bland. Yeah. I don't feel like I've done enough to get myself, to keep myself in the competition. Um, I feel I haven't done myself justice. Carl, he had a stinking skills test. The good thing about Carl was he picked himself up off the floor. The garnishes were nice. I don't think the cocoa powder worked. The sauce was a little bit fruity. But I think the key message for, for Carl is that he, he, he rose off the ground and delivered a dish. A bit up and down, so I don't think I've, I've really come here and shown off. I think I've just come here and done mediocre. Helen didn't show an enormous amount of cookery skill. But she had some nice, fresh, tangy flavours on there. It was a dish in a restaurant that you think, I'd eat all of that, I'd eat that. Would you remember it tomorrow? Probably not. What a roller coaster! But I would love to go through and just try to prove myself one more time. And then we have Scott with the, the beef. Yeah. Good execution, good ideas, but I just felt the dish could have gone to a new, a new level, new heights, and I'm, I'm not sure why he didn't do that today. 
I didn't think the truffle and the ricotta was necessary, but the beef was wonderful, it was medium rare, the sauce was rich, it was heavenly. I'd love to be a court finalist. I think I've done well to get as far as I have, but if I can go a little bit further each time, that would be, that'd be grand. We have one more quarterfinal place up mm. for grabs. Who do you want to see cook again? For me, I know exactly which one. This was a good, strong round with good quality chefs. But we can only take three chefs through to a quarterfinal. The first chef that is leaving us today is... Ian. Cheers, Thank you. Thank you. The second chef that is going to leave us today is... Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. The third chef leaving us today is... Helen. Thank you, Helen. really gutted to be going. It takes a certain kind of person to work under this type of pressure, and it got to me, so, yeah, there it is. De definitely disappointing to go. I don't think I did myself justice, though. It's my own fault. I tripped myself up, so... I'm, I'm going to put it down to a bit of bad luck. Um, I just didn't, didn't produce what I was capable of, um, and they obviously s saw that, so... Congratulations, you three are quality and your MasterChef quarterfinalists. Well done. Yeah, I'm really happy to be in the quarterfinals. Um, I think I just scraped through, um, but hopefully they can see a bit of potential. I'm happy. I think it's a, a good start to the competition, but the bar has been set and now I've just got to carry on cooking to that level. Today's been intense, nerve-wracking. Uh, shot to the system, but I'm happy with the result and I'm happy it's over. <laughs> Next time, it's the last heat, and six more chefs will fight for the remaining quarter final places. You never know, we might invent a new type of mayonnaise. Hmm. I cannot tell you how happy you've just made us three.